Hello Bits Brews, this is Craig from Bitswalks.co.uk here and this is the final part of my painting the Coming Dragon um, series. So in this one I'll be painting Elspeth von Draken who sits on top of the Coming Dragon and also her throne as well. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so here we have the Coming Dragon and Elspeth von Draken. So she was undercovered in the same way as the Coming Dragon was. Uh, which is a dark primer and then a light primer sprayed over the top. We're going to start with some Storm of Iron Fair now. Uh, this is for the throne. So I'm just going to paint my whole thing in this colour. I'll pick out the details later on in this video. I'll thin it down, just make sure it gets into all them little nooks and crannies and I'll probably do a couple of coats. So next up, I'm going to take some like, Minus Stratum Grey. And this is the paint on some of the odd little details. So we'll have a couple of different shades of grey on here. So it's like little skull heads and odd little sort of carvings onto the back of the seat. You can really just pick out any bits that you want. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. And I'm sort of just over brushing this. So I sort of wipe off some of the paint on my brush and just gently sort of brush it along the surface and um, if you do it lightly it's sort of like dry brushing just a little bit heavier. Next I take some Aphonian camo shade so I want to have like a slight sort of greenish um, tint to this sort of stone frown and it obviously contrasts nicely with the Calming Dragon so a theme that I've been doing through this whole video series so, um, any of you who've watched the whole thing will know by now that I've been going for some contrast in the colours and this certainly helps with that as green is a good complementary colour to the red. And once it dries it does really give a nice effect. I really like this. So next I'm going to dry brush it all with some long beard grey. So like the rocks on the base I just really like using this colour to highlight stone areas and I'm doing both shades of grey as well so everything here it's just going to be highlighted with this dry brush. And then um, I'll go over with the candles as well and that just gives them a bit of colour too. So as you can see this is what we're left with. So I'm going to put him to one side for now and bring out Elspeth von Draken herself. So I'm going to start with some Barak na Burgundy. This will be for her cloak. And you can see um, the way that I've primed her, it really helps bring out sort of where all the detail is. And yeah, I'm just going to do a couple of thin coats of this all over our cloak, like so. And then I'll take some non oil to darken it down. So I want to go for this really sort of dark, burgundy, purpley uh, looking robe. I thought it'd be a different colour. I haven't really used the Varric Nut Burgundy much at all. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to use it. I apologise, the focus has gone a little bit here, but um, I do um, zoom the camera out a little bit for the remainder of the clips, just to keep the focus a bit better. So I'm going to take a bag now burgundy again, and I'm going to layer it back up um, over the robes, but obviously keep them that non-oil in the recesses. So very carefully just layering it up. Oh, well, good tip on my brush and I'll thin the paint down ever so slightly just so it'll flow nicely off the brush. So you could go for like blends and all sorts when doing this but I'm just gonna be doing some highlights so I'm gonna take some Barrack Nord Burgundy and add in some Screaming Skull. There isn't really any sort of DW paint for a good sort of highlight for this and I'm sure you the mix I get so it's about maybe 70-30 mix here and um, 70% Burgundy to 30 Screaming Skull. But you can just eyeball it. There's no exact measurements or anything like this. And I'm just going to run this along all the edges. There's quite a lot of edges on these robes. You could dry brush it if you so wish. I just decided to use a fine tip on my brush. And again, thin it out to get maximum control. And um, I didn't use a wet palette, and I wish I did because it was very um, humid that day. So you can see even already the paint is sort of drying out a little bit. 
So I've had even more Spoon and Skulls in a mix, so probably a 50-50 mix at this point. Again, I'll just show you on my thumb, sort of colour again, so it's a lighter colour than before, obviously. And I'm just going to sort of pick out higher points, more prominent sort of looking areas, where I think the light will hit the most. Um, so that's sort of a further highlight to this. And you know, just working our way, all these sort of where these sort of bits where the robes meet, like the corners. Um, definitely a good place to go. Some of the edges. And just very carefully, just keep working my way around. And again, the paint was sort of dried up. You see, it's not flying off the brush as easy, but I soon sort that out. And once it's done, we have some nice highlight robes. I really like how they came out. Again, like I say, you could have blended them if you really want them even more realistic. So, what themed grey now is for uh, her sort of leggings and her undershirt. I guess you'd call them leggings, or just trousers. And I'm going to highlight that up with some Spanish grey. So, just keeping the previous layer just in the recesses. So, I'm not going for a Higher contrast here. You could add a shade wash if you wanted the contrast to be a bit higher here, but and that's not what I'm going for with this. So just layer on up. And a good tip on the brush again, and just very carefully with paint just a little bit thin. Just working my way around. Like so. And then I'm going to take some ceramite white, or you could use white scar. I just happen to have the ceramite white on hand. Um, mix it in to get a nice sort of lighter warp theme grey colour. Again, just eyeball it. And this is going to be the main highlight. So I just add it to all the highest points, all the folds and the cloth, like so. Next, I'm going to take some Flavor One Flesh for her skin. So she's got just a bare arms on her face. Again, it's thinned out. I'm just going to layer this all over these areas. You may need a couple of coats. And now I'm going to wash all these areas with Reutland Flesh Shade. So even though I'm going for quite a pale looking skin, I do want to add just a little bit warmth into the shadows. And just spread it around evenly. I normally just stick a dollop in the eyes and then just work, work it around. And then give that plenty of time to dry and take some flayed one flesh yet again. And thin it out a bit more so than usual and then just apply it back over, leaving the right one flesh shade in all of them deeper recesses. And if you're careful on the face, you don't want to get any in them recesses. And if you do, just reapply the shade. Don't just be very careful. She has quite a small face, so you need a good tip on the brush. And then thin out some powdered witch flesh to add your highlights. Now it's important here that it's quite thin, otherwise she'll have a load of white areas on her face. And I do think her nose is just a little bit too white when I've looked at some of the pictures of the finished um, miniature, but that can easily be fixed. But as always, I normally just focus on the cheeks, uh, the jaw, the, the brow, and then the fingers, and just run on a line across the top of their arms. Now I'm going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and thin this way, 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 way down to a glaze, so it's almost like water. And just apply a little amount just over her cheeks and her lips. This is adds a little bit more colour into her cheeks and also her lips. If you go too heavy with this, you can just sort of glaze over with the flame on flesh just, just to fix it. But it's just such a small little amount, but it does make a big difference. So, the messy desert is going to be used for her hair. So I'm not doing anything too special with my hair. I was, when I was just looking at re 
and sort of references. I saw someone use this sort of hair colour and I quite liked it, so that's what I went with. And I'll take some catch and flesh as well. This is just for the whole of her scythe. Now there are a lot of roses and stuff at the top. I'm also going to paint her shoes as well, but I'm going to paint the whole scythe as you see there. Then I'm going to get some Agrax Ab Shade and apply it over all of the brown areas. So the two previous steps that we've done, the catch and flesh, and it's a messy desert. And even though we painted over most of the top of the scythe, I'm still applying this shade wash there as well. Then I'm going to highlight the, the um, scythe and her shoes with Night Quester Flesh. So I've said it before in previous videos, um, I really like these dark flesh tones to use on um, brown areas. They've got some really nice shades and they work really well together. And the Night Quester Flesh is just a really good, really good highlight colour for that catch and flesh. I try and pick out some of the wood grain and then just the higher points on her shoes. So next I'm going to start painting the roses and just a simple, simple way of painting these. I'm just taking some pink horror, filling it out a little bit and just applying it all over the roses. So it's a bit hard on the sculpt to sort of know where some of the roses are, where some sort of the bone um, detail and is. But I'm going to start painting that, it becomes a bit more obvious. And um, there's also some roses around the throne as well. Uh, just in case anyone was wondering why I didn't paint them earlier. And now I'm just going to add a highlight of Empress Children over these. Again, you could add a wash to add more depth, but I didn't really want too much depth on this colour, so... And normally I find when I get to the end of miniatures, I'm trying to get them done, so... I... I do rush, rush some areas a bit, but I'm quite happy with it. Take some screen and skull now. So this is just the overbrushed on them bone areas. So, I mean, you could leave them as wood, but I quite like having them painted in the screen and skull. So you're just overbrushing them. There's sort of little skulls and rib cages and stuff. And I'll take some iron hand steel for the blade. So sort of looking back, I quite like how how the blade looks as it catches the light. Um, but I don't go enough, enough, do nothing too fancy. Um, just apply some null oil next. This will help just darken it in the recesses. Like so, I've only done that with a little thin layer, but that's enough. And I'm going to highlight it with some rune fang steel, so you can sort of see where the light. It's hitting up already, and they're, they're the areas I am going to focus on with the uh, Rune Fang Steel. Just running the side of my brush along the top of that blade. I'll also do the same underneath as well. And then lastly, I'm just going to paint her cherubs, and there's some little detail on, on her as well. And there's that little skull thing on her chest and on her shoes. But I'll paint them all this colour as well. And then much like the roses, I'm just going to add a highlight. Um, Sotic Green is the colour that I'm using here. Could use Iron and Blue as well. And again, you know, if you wanted to go a bit further or add more depth, you can put a shade over these areas. But again, I wasn't really looking for too much depth in the recesses. And with that, the Carmine Dragon is complete. So it feels like I've been painting this for ages. I made sort of the first couple of videos and then had a little break for a little while, but I'm so glad it's done. I'm so happy with the final result. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video series. And I think maybe this one was my favorite video out of all of them. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching and please feel free to like subscribe and comment down below and all that jazz and um, I'll see you all again in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon.
to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.